entrepreneurship is traditionally seen as innovators, starting up new businesses, assuming risks and rewards instead of becoming employees, and often failing, but sometimes achieving spectacular business success. And most school-based entrepreneurial fo programs focus on this, with students creating small businesses. But entrepreneurial thinking can be used in many areas. I don't necessarily think that you have to have the home run and the huge Apple computer on your first start. I spent a long time in my life with skills just building little devices for fun. For fun is one of the key things, because that drives you to think and think and think and make it better and better and better than you ever would if you're doing it for a company. Build things at first for yourself. That you creative entrepreneurs work to produce creative works. People that look for great ideas to make money uh, you know, aren't nearly as, as successful as those who say, okay, what do I really love to do? What am I excited about? What do I know something about? You know, what's kind of interesting? Social entrepreneurs work to achieve benefit to the community. Don't think about how do I get really, how do I get big fast? That will happen if you actually build something super meaningful and super important. So don't think about, you know, what is the quickest way to success? Think about what is the best way to building something important that the world really Knowledge entrepreneurs work to produce new knowledge. And institutional entrepreneurs work within established businesses, often in independent think tanks or special project groups. But entrepreneurship is fundamentally about creating preferred futures. Now, effectutation is another name for entrepreneurial thinking. The process of opportunity identification and new venture creation. And it has five key principles. The bird in the hand principle. Not starting with a goal or a problem, but with what you already have. Who students are, what they know, what they can do, what they can learn to do, who they know, and what resources they have. This is their entrepreneurial capital. The affordable loss principle. Now this is not focusing on what they will achieve or gain, but on what they are prepared to lose and how they can minimize this. How much time are they prepared to commit? What could be the social cost in terms of team formation and management? Or the risk of it to their reputation? And it's the crazy quilt principle. This involves cooperating with those you can trust, not keeping a resolution idea secret or trying to do everything themselves. X problems and X solutions may change as entrepreneurial capital expands by including the entrepreneurial capital of others. Because ideas are plentiful. It is entrepreneurial capital where value lies. For this turns ideas into solutions. And this increases with partners. I do think that one thing that's important is, especially if you're a founder or a technical founder, is to realize that you can't do everything. And even if you can, you shouldn't. The lemonade principle. Surprises can be good and open up new opportunities, but only if students are always looking for them and willing to change plans to respond to them. And fifthly, the pilot in the plane principle. The future cannot always be predicted, but students can influence some of the factors that determine the future, rather than responding to a future that is influenced by others. So entrepreneurs do not find a problem and search for a means of solving it. Using ethicutation principles, they start with the entrepreneurial capital they have. And it is from this point they look at possible problems to solve or exploit using that capital. Remembering that problems are not always negatives. They can be opportunities. And entrepreneurial students measure themselves not by what they've achieved in the past, but, what, but by the vision of what they may achieve in the future. Entrepreneurial students are constantly developing their capital through knowledge skills, understanding of new technologies, new programming languages, new concepts, developing their thinking skills, 
better understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of potential team members, better understanding of their teachers, and of external contexts that may be able to help them in solving problems. They also gain in understanding. As their worldview expands, they begin to see that there are more and more possible problems available for them to solve, because each one represents an opportunity. And each new year in digital technologies presents another opportunity for students to look at their capital and explore what problems may be solved with it. And this is the fundamental point of IPBL. It permits students to find their own problems to solve based on their entrepreneurial capital. While EPBL simply requires students to find the means of solving problems set by their teachers. It is your job as a teacher in IPBL to help students increase their capital. Through new knowledge learning about new concepts, say iteration, or how to connect a device to the internet, or find the average trend line in a graph. This all builds the resources that students can draw upon, their entrepreneurial capital. And this can be done through various pedagogical techniques, not just projects. But it is in IPBL where students can apply it, where they can develop and use their entrepreneurial thinking, whether or not they go on to apply this in creativity or social change or increasing human knowledge or in building the next new billion dollar business.